Let your imagination take you back shortly after 9 o'clock a.m. December 6, 1917. At this very spot, French freighter ship Mont Blanc and Norwegian ship Emo collided, sending death and destruction in all directions. This was the largest man-made explosion of the pre-nuclear age. The Mont Blanc, loaded with high explosives, hoists its anchor, clears the submarine nets, and begins to make its journey into the Bedford Basin. This is where it is supposed to join a convoy to cross the Atlantic for war-torn France. The Emo left its moorings and began to head out of the basin, carrying relief for Belgium. There were whistle signals exchanged from both ships as they tried to avoid each other, but it was too late. At the time of the explosion, a large crowd had gathered at this spot to watch the drama unfold. The people were high up enough to escape the worst of the blast. Barbara Orr ran down the hill from her house on Canny Street to watch the spectacle. Suddenly, all was quiet and she felt herself hurtling through the air. She landed near here and eventually struggled to her feet. Her home was nothing but smoke and flames. The clock on the north side of the tower of City Hall stopped at the time of the explosion and the time remains unchanged to this day. City councillors, officials and citizens met the morning of the explosion to plan for massive relief efforts to begin. The shaft of the Mont Blanc's anchor was hurled two and a quarter miles into the wooded shores of the northwest arm where it buried itself six feet deep into the earth. Shortly after it was dug up, it was put on display. Today, it can still be seen close to the spot where it landed, surrounded by the townhouses and apartments of Regatta Point. Here we are at the Firefighters Monument on Halifax's North End. The pride of the fire department was their new modern fire engine named Patricia. She raced onto the harbor to put on Mont Blanc's flames, when she was destroyed by the blast. Eleven firefighters lost their lives. Our class became interested in the schools and children of Richmond. Richmond School was badly damaged by the blast. Two students died in the schoolyard and 86 others died at home or outside watching the events unfold. Shibukta Road School, now the Maritime Conservatory of Music, witnessed many tragic scenes. After repairs were quickly completed, the school became the mortuary for victims of the explosion. The almost finished Alexander McKay Boys School was damaged by the blast but was still able to be used as a temporary food depot. The schools merged in the 1970s and became co-educational. The Shambhala School now occupies the former boys' school. This is St. Joseph's A. McKay School on Russell Street. It occupies roughly the same site as the former St. Joseph's Girls' School. Due to an earlier fire, the St. Joseph's Girls' School was shared by the boys. The girls were safer in the sturdier building than the boys who would attend school until the afternoon that day. Eight girls died at the school and 55 boys lost their lives. The Hydrostone District was developed after the explosion and was inspired by the Garden City philosophy of tree-lined streets and rear driveways. Here is one of the many memorials to the unidentified dead that can be found throughout the city. The people of Boston were the first to lend a hand by sending a train loaded with doctors and nurses and emergency supplies to Halifax in the aftermath of the explosion. Since 1971, Nova Scotia has been giving a tree to Boston as a token of our appreciation. Thank you, Boston and the state of Massachusetts for all your help. We will never forget you. Hi, I'm in Boston Common, and if you look right over there, that 